Hey everyone, so this video is about food. But before we jump into it, let's just, um, I'm gonna do a bit of self-promotion. But yeah, in light of the recent coronavirus, perhaps some of you guys have been unfortunately uh, quarantined at home, or maybe some of you are trying to avoid going outdoors and stuff. And yeah, this YouTube channel and Instagram, as you know, is about home workouts and uh, home exercises. So for those of you guys who still want to do some form of exercise or some sort of fitness yeah, in the comfort of your room or your house, um, yeah, hopefully you can like, you know, scroll through some of my videos and stuff, get some maybe inspiration from that and yeah, uh, do some of the workouts. And also, if you guys want to see any other like fitness or exercise stuff that you, you have questions about or video uh, uh, exercises that you want to suggest for me to do, um, and yeah, queries in general, just let me know on either like YouTube or Instagram and yeah, let, I'll see what I can do about it. So yeah, for now, we're going to get back into the food. Um, I've done all these home workout videos, uh, two collaborations that I'm really happy with and uh, yeah, just some videos on calisthenics. So I haven't done much about food. Uh, I did post two nutrition videos on my Instagram account and those were actually relatively well received. So yeah, here's me. Uh, testing it out on YouTube. So I hope you guys like it. Let's get back to the kitchen. This is like uh, the meals that I would normally eat uh, before or sometimes even after my workout. Uh, it basically, you know, oatmeal is the base and uh, soy is the liquid that I use. And in between, I'll like throw other stuff. So what I got today, banana, peanut butter and Milo. Sometimes I'll add in other things like walnuts or apples or stuff like that. And yeah. Let's get to it. Alright, so how much oatmeal do I use? Uh, normally, this spoon, I put like 13 like scoops like this. Okay, uh, I haven't actually measured it out. I believe this is one cup size. So yeah, I'll put all the like calories or whatever contents around here. So let's measure like how many uh, spoonfuls, how many cups 13 spoonfuls make. So that's one. Uh, 12 of these spoons seems to have filled up the cup so let's just assume it's a bit more than one cup because I use 13 spoonfuls right so I guess somewhere around here so this amount just over just a bit more than a cup all right and all of that goes in so yes yeah, that looks like the usual amount. One thing to know about oats is um, it looks like this amount now, but once you add water and all that, once it goes into your stomach, oatmeal is going to expand. So I believe if you look online, like anything that has like oats inside, if you give it some time, it will start to expand. So this can be like oat, oat pancakes or uh, I think oat muffins and things like that. It, after a while, it will just fill up. So for those who are looking to find uh, food, that helps you to uh, fill the stomach but it's not so uh, calorie heavy for those who are maybe on diet or whatever oats is a good substitute that you can use because it makes you feel full but um, there isn't a lot of uh, isn't very dense in terms of calories next next up we're gonna have peanut butter the usual amount I put is two tablespoons so I'm quite happy. I particularly like this brand of peanut butter. When I was doing an exchange program in Perth, Australia, I discovered it. And back here in Singapore, it's a bit more pricey than how much it is in Aussie. But I got these at a discount. Yes! Okay, so <laughs> two tablespoons. I'm generally quite generous with the tablespoon. It looks something like this. Let's throw it in. I don't really have all these like, funky measuring tools and all that i just have i mean whatever i have to work with is what i use to make my food so you can see that's quite a gracious amount of peanut butter yeah next ingredient is the banana um if you like to have like a bit more sugar inside your entire meal, you can put two bananas. Today I only have one, so I'm just using one. Normally I like to add two. Yeah, no need to dice it up and all that. It's gonna get blended anyway. Woo! Okay, 
by law. So, mm, just in case you guys don't know, uh, Milo uh, gives you a lot of energy, but that also means there's a certain amount of sugar inside. And this is the easiest way to lower your sugar intake. Just use half the packet, yeah. Like, it's quite common sense logic, I would say, but some people always think that if you got a whole packet, you gotta use the whole thing. No, you just use half. Yeah, so that reduces the amount of sugar you That reduces the amount of sugar you are consuming by half. Yeah, so that's just it. And this other half packet, you can use it in like a regular drink or anything, like on the same day or the day after. So yeah, I'm gonna keep that. Woo. Last but not least, soy milk. Um, why I choose to use soy instead of other milk is um, because my body doesn't do too well with a lot of milk. Not that I'm lactose intolerant, but if I drink a lot of it, yeah, it does you know, make the flow, make the flow good. So, um, yeah, I just use soy milk. And I just top it up. Uh, the, this blender, Nutri Bullet, there's a max level. So normally I just fill it until it hits the max. It looks kind of, doesn't look very pleasant now. So I fill it uh, just somewhere around there. And but I don't want too much soy either. So the remaining I top up with water. Where's my water? So here it is. Alright, and the remainder is just topped up with water somewhere around there. Um, I like to live life on the edge so I feel it past the max level. But uh, yeah, I shouldn't, yeah, it just, yeah, do what you feel is best. I don't have any fixed amounts for how much I take and all. And yeah, now will be a good time to uh, mute this part of the video. So that's it, that's the drink. Some people say that my choice of food looks a bit disgusting and stuff, but like, yo, I think, I think that looks okay, right? Please. <laughs> Alright, so that is the end of the actual food uh, blended thingy. Yeah, I proceeded to consume it very happily afterwards. Uh, yeah, now I want to move on to a bit of like food related questions that I get um, and fitness. Okay, so the first question that I normally get asked, uh, how much do I eat every day? Um, I would say anywhere between four to five meals a day, where I would say that one meal would be like a, a bowl of rice and some food, maybe a bowl of noodles or like one and a half sandwiches, something like that. Uh, for those who count calories, uh, I don't do that anymore. But yeah, I would estimate it's somewhere between like the high 2000s to just over 3000 calories a day. Okay, second question that I get asked, and it's even more popular than the first one, but how can I lose weight? Yeah, and this is in terms of food. So first things first, there are a lot of different methods that are prescribed out there on the internet about how you can lose weight. Um, my own take on it is this, cut one of your meals by half. So if the average person eats breakfast, lunch, and dinner, okay, I would suggest cutting dinner by half. I've explained this in my weight loss video. Okay, but basically it's to have the idea of like tapering all your meals so that your last meal you're eating actually the least amount of food. So yeah, that being said, just reduce the dinner by half because that's the one where you're eating the least already. What this does is it puts your body in a caloric deficit. So you have the usual amount of calories that you eat, now you're eating a bit lesser, so you're in a deficit. If this continues over a period of time, then your weight will start to go down. That's basically the idea of it. However, don't like starve yourself, okay? Um, a caloric deficit does not equate to not eating any calories. There's a base amount that we should eat. There's a base amount of food that we should consume so we can carry out our uh, regular activities. And um, if you're going to be devoid of like an entire meal or you're going to starve yourself and it starts to like affect your mood, it starts to affect your lifestyle, then that's not very healthy anymore. And online, you will literally find like hundreds of different types of diet plans online. Okay, there's, you know, all those old school kind where it's all about like salads and greens and healthy food. And now there's a lot of like new theories on like, you know, eat all the desserts and snacks you want and you're still going to look this way and still lose your weight and stuff like that. So main thing is be cautious about what you eat. Okay, weigh out the pros and the cons. There are going to be a lot of benefits. The benefits all are going to be saying like, 
uh, yeah, you're going to lose weight in a certain number of weeks, certain number of days. That's all the benefits that they're going to be the same. But the cons, go and look at it, okay? Uh, look at the reviews just as how you would review going to a certain hotel or certain holiday destination. Look at the reviews for a diet plan, how people feel and what people say about it. And if you think you're comfortable with going into it and trying it out, then yeah, you can, you know, you know, if it's a free one, then just go ahead and try it. And if you are willing to invest money into like an actual plan, uh, yeah, then try it as well. But main thing is just to read up about it. As for myself, I only can talk about caloric deficit. I think that's one of the things that's the most generic, yeah, and that makes the most amount of sense. Okay, other things, I'm not an expert, so I don't want to comment too much about it. The main point that I want to get at is just um, don't lose happiness as you lose weight. Okay, they shouldn't be two things that go down together, right? You should be happy about your weight loss if that is your fitness goal. If you're going to be frustrated and depressed and like very sad about it, then I think that may not be the right mentality that you're approaching to your weight loss. Alright, so uh, third question, but before that, I just want to say that, you know, this YouTubing thing is a lot harder than I thought. Okay, um, I kept trying to answer a lot of different questions and yeah i just went off course after some of them got really really philosophical so yeah i mean you can see it's a different t-shirt the background's a bit different uh because it's a different day i've been trying to re-record certain portions of this video ever since like sunday and today is already tuesday night so i'm just trying to polish up and touch up on things those who also do youtubing i'm sure you guys will understand but yeah so third question that i usually get asked um what kind of protein powders or shakes do i take I don't actually take any form of like protein powders or protein shakes or supplements and all that. Um, yeah, I do take anti-inflammatory supplements for my weak knees, but yeah, no form of like protein or muscle building, fat burner, mass gainer thingies that are, yeah, that are promoted out there. I think it was somewhere around 2011, 2012 where I got first introduced to the idea of like fitness and sports. And during this period of time, my friends were telling me, you know, that uh, like protein powder is some like magic and that's gonna make you big and strong and you know um, Just personally for me, I guess it's an ego or pride kind of thing But I just wanted to show my friends that yeah, I'm gonna not take these like so-called magic supplement things and You know gonna find ways to build uh, build muscle or increase size in my own way And yes, we all know that protein powders It isn't a magical way to suddenly become super fit or super muscular and all that You've got to take them at the right periods of time There are different supplementations for different situations And of course, you need to put the work in You need to exercise, you need to work out And yeah, you can't just like consume a whole lot of like whey protein or something like that And suddenly become like, like super jacked And by the way, I'm not against protein powders in any way You guys, if you want to consume it, go ahead I'm pretty sure there's a number of good websites or pages out there that will teach you like you know, what protein is for what or when to consume it or when like what is pre-workout, what is post-workout and things like that. It's just that for me, it's become like a lifestyle. The past like seven or eight years of exercising, I haven't consumed protein powders and protein shakes. So yeah, I don't think I need them right now. So I'm just not going to take them. Uh, life is dynamic of course so i may in the future have to take them for whatever reason or want to take them to improve certain things i i don't know how it works but i guess i can serve as an example of you know somebody who has not consumed any form of protein supplementation for my past like seven or eight years and um i would say i have reached a decent level of fitness okay there's always room for improvement yeah, but for those of you guys out there who are just starting fitness, and this is what this channel is about, you know, for people who are just getting into fitness and exercise, and, you know, you go to a nutrition store, you see this whole lot of, like, canisters of, like, different names and, you know, all kinds of weird protein formulas and shaker bottles and liquids and stuff, and if you're wondering, like, do I need all this to become fitter? The solid answer from me is uh, outright no. Um, perhaps if you're going to a more professional sport or if for some reason your kind of exercise or physical activity requires that certain type of protein or you've, you know your teammates or your coaches and all that have explained to you that you need this certain thing or yeah, for whatever reason you need that kind of nutrition then yeah, perhaps it can make you stronger in that aspect but if you're really just starting out don't worry so much about all this nutrition stuff just start yeah, that's the main idea yeah, really just start. 
Alright, so that brings us to the end of the three questions and the, the entire video, to be honest. Hopefully, I've managed to answer the questions quite extensively and that it's helped you along the way. And yeah, if you happen to be isolated or quarantined at home because of the whole virus situation, then I also hope that I've managed to entertain you for this, like, what, I think, like, 15-ish minutes. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, if you like what you enjoy, yeah, you know what to do. And if not, don't stop moving. I will see you soon. <laughs>